Hey guys, today on Foodie Friday, we are talking through some tips and tricks for electric pressure cooker beginners, all while having a whole lot of fun. Welcome back to my camper kitchen. I am Chris from RecipesThatCrock.com and today we are talking through some tips and tricks for those of you that maybe are new to electric pressure cookers and that would be like the Ninja Foodie or an Instant Pot. A uh, Crock Pot has one called the Crock Pot Express. There's been, there's all kinds of different ones out there. Basically an electric pressure cooker is much like an old-fashioned pressure cooker in that it cooks things really quickly versus how a slow cooker normally cooks things slowly and except it's all in one unit that you plug into the wall instead of using on your stove like an old-fashioned pressure cooker in theory it also has um, more safety features in it to make it a little bit more user-friendly to folks so I thought today we would talk through some just basic tips and tricks that we found by um, putting recipes on our website for both instant pot foodie and all kinds of electric pressure cooking those of you that have the foodie I know that you also have the air fry feature and so we might do this sometime in the future about air fryers and the air fry feature but today is primarily going to be about the electric pressure cooker features and then we'll also talk briefly about slow cooking as well in them so I have them behind me there was no easy way in my camper kitchen to kind of be up here and talk to you and kind of have them so I'm gonna reach back there and get stuff as we talk and I'm also gonna reach back there and get my notes because I did write that right stuff out so real quick before we start into all the electric pressure cooker fun let's talk about slow cooking so I have told you guys before that I don't generally prefer to slow cook in my electric pressure cookers and that is because in general the cooking times are a little bit offset from cooking times in traditional slow cookers so for me somebody who's cooking to tell other people how to cook in their slow cookers it kind of throws me off so I want to be able to tell people an approximate amount of time and if I'm slow cooking in the uh, foodie or if I'm slow cooking in the instant pot using the slow cooker feature it's gonna throw off my times a little bit for me although I know that a lot of people are frustrated with how fast traditional slow cookers cook these days meaning that they cook food faster and so what used to be all day recipes some days sometimes don't turn out to be quite all day recipes like you have a lot of four and six hour recipes that kind of crank out like the one I got cooking back there <laughs> for testing so one of the tips I'd like to give you is if you do want to try slow cooking in your um, electric pressure cookers using the slow cook feature is you might consider looking at times if those times are given for traditional slow cookers and adding about two hours in general that's what I found to um, help me out so if I would normally cook something four hours in my other slow cooker then I would most likely use the slow cook feature on one of these and cook for at least six um, so that just kind of give you that idea or if I'm cooking for six in that guy I'm probably gonna have to cook eight in this one so that's just a general rule of thumb it doesn't work for everything those of you that are pros at slow cooking in your instant pot and in your foodie I'd love for you guys to um, leave those comments down below I will say in my personal experience with my my own units the Instant Pot tends for me to cook a little bit slower than the Foodie does. So the Foodie um, tends to cook a little bit more like regular recipes for me, but the Instant Pot I definitely always have to add time. So that's just something to keep in mind with slow cooking. But let's go on and talk about pressure cooking because that's what most people get the electric pressure cookers for. They like that, but that most I think every electric pressure cooker I've ever had has the browning feature so you can turn it on saute and brown meats like ground beef and those kinds of things or roast 
before you go into the pressure cooking step so they like having that one pot feature so that's a that's a really cool thing but one of the frustrations that folks tend to have right off the bat is getting their pot to reach pressure. So one of the differences between a slow cooker and an electric pressure cooker is the amount of liquid that is required to get it to cook properly. So in order for an electric pressure cooker to work, you have to get it up to pressure. So that's when um, the uh, lid uh, seals. This part will seal off because everything inside's gotten so hot and then it will pop the little pin that's right here up whenever it's sealed. And that's when everything inside is under pressure and that's how it cooks faster because it's cooking with pressure as well. So um, to get your uh, dish to pressure, you may or may not know, the general rule of thumb for a six quart is to have at least a cup of liquid. So that liquid could be water, that liquid could be broth, or something that has a lot of liquid in it. Some sauces are liquidy enough to make that pressure happen, but at least a cup of liquid in your pot. If you have a um, electric pressure cooker that's bigger than six or six and a half quart if you're up in the eight quart range a lot of times you need to even bump that liquid up another half cup to a cup and a half so a lot of times what people will do if if a recipe is struggling to reach pressure is they'll just pour a little bit more broth in there so that tends to help the other thing, if that, if you've got plenty of liquid in there and you're still not reaching pressure, there's two things you can check right off the bat. One is, is your lid seal properly placed in there? Because it can sometimes do that. I don't know if you can see how it's like when it's been taken out to clean and it's not fully in there and then that makes the lid hard to close and maybe the lid will close but the seal's not in the proper place and so the seal is having a hard time sealing that could be your problem right there and that's the same with both the um, ninja foodie or the um, uh, instant pot I just grabbed my foodie lid and it was already off the track so just making sure that it's in there and it's up against that middle track that will make sure that your seal is able to seal and also making sure that it's not that seal is not cracked or there's nothing that it's not worn because that a bad seal will make it hard for your lid to seal these are replaceable i know i found them for the instant pot i believe on amazon before i'm sure if you can't find foodies on amazon you can find it on their website <coughs> The other thing you can check immediately if you're struggling to reach pressure is that the knob one is turned to seal, first of all. I'll, I'll admit, I've done that before too, where it's been kind of off to the side where it's not quite to seal, so it's been venting just a little bit too much. Um, the other thing is sometimes I just go and I press it down to make sure that it's in its proper place because sometimes it can it's it's really loosey-goosey in there so sometimes it can get just a little off and it make it hard for it to seal now one it's gonna let off just a little bit even while it's cooking and two once you know it is sealed leave that alone we don't want you messing with this thing because you don't want to mess with the pressure we don't want anything to malfunction um, just for safety reasons I wouldn't be messing with these these things I would just say just make sure it's popped in there nice and that seal is nice and tight and generally that takes care of 99% of the problems there are those recipes that are just a little bit uh, difficult to deal with and um, those uh, tend to be recipes that uh, have a thicker sauce or something like that and frankly you don't want to add a lot of broth to it because it's going to make your final dish not as good and one of the tips that I would give you for that I don't have prepared for so give me a second so one of the ways that you can kind of get around that is using a pot what's called the pot in pot 
um, method. And so the way that you would do that is you would take your foodie or instant pot insert and you put your trivet down in the bottom and you take an oven safe uh, metal or you could even use glass if you have an oven safe glass bowl and you can set it down on that trivet. And then you would pour your liquid, not inside the container that's going to have your food in it. You'd pour it down over this grate and then put this down in here. So then you have plenty of liquid for your pot to reach pressure and your actual casserole or whatever, whatever you're trying. Sometimes you can even bake and do fun things like that. Whatever you're trying to cook in that way is in a separate pot that doesn't take on that liquid. So pot in pot is, is one of those tips. One of the things that the thing about pot in pot is these, this is an accessory, for example, you can find in our influencer shop. Um, the link will be down below, but these are the kinds of things. If you look on Amazon, there's a lot of really inexpensive accessories that people love to use for, um, electric pressure cooking. And a lot of them, like this particular pot, can also be used, uh, for air frying. If you have an air fryer or if you're using a Ninja Foodie, you can use this with the air frying feature too. So they have a lot of double use. Um, and they come in super handy for all kinds of things. I'm going to hop behind here for a second. Cleaning and care tips for your foodie and for your Instant Pot. The number one tip when working with your foodie for care is to notice that this is a non-stick pot. And um, learn from our mistakes you can very easily scratch this pot by just using metal utensils instead of using um, utensils that are coated in nylon. Like this is a nylon utensil, this would be okay to use in it. I'm trying to see, I must not have my other ones in here, but there, oops, these guys. When you're using stirring and that kind of thing, make sure you're using wooden, nylon, or silicone with your pot instead of metal utensils because metal utensils will scratch your um, ceramic coating. Now, that ceramic coating comes in very, very handy, particularly when using air frying with the Ninja, but also for pressure cooking because almost nothing sticks to this. So it's very easy to wash and clean on a regular basis. That's one of the benefits of that, uh, what comes with the foodie. Now, the Instant Pot, mostly with electric pressure cooking, it does not, um, I don't really have a whole lot of problem with uh, things sticking. Now, sometimes when you do the saute step um, in here, I will get things to stick, but my number one tip for that is a product called Barkeeper's Friend. I prefer the powder over the paste, I think, or gel. I think it comes in a tube, too. But I prefer the powder, and all I do is if I have something stuck on there, I will um, get it wet under the sink and um, dump out the most of the water, and then I will sprinkle this powder over the top of the wet surface, let it sit for a few minutes, and then I will take a sponge to it and nine times out of 10, it comes right off um, by just adding a little bit more hot water and scrubbing that sponge. I really, really like Barkeeper's Friend. Um, I think it makes, uh, makes the Instant Pot in particular uh, pretty much the equivalent of a non-stick situation for me because it's so easy to use. It wipes out once this is used as easy as my non-stick pot. So I highly recommend using this. And I think this is also in our influencer shop if you can't find it in your grocery store. My last tip for care and maintenance applies to both of these. So I've got everything stacked up all over here. And that is well, the inside of the pot is generally very, very easy to clean, the outside 
lip of the pressure cooker is not that easy to get in there and food does get in there. Um, it's easy with the lid primarily because you can take this rubber seal out and kind of wipe things down. You can wash the rubber seal and then you can easily take a um, sponge or a cloth to wash your lid out. But this little crevice here for both the foodie and the Instant Pot is really, really difficult to get in the nooks and crannies. And so one of the tips that I've seen people use and I started doing on my own is getting a little inexpensive pack of these foam brushes in the craft store. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, they can come in this size or this size. And what I do is I just use my dishwater and I get it nice and sudsy. And then I just use these foam brushes and they get right in those crevices for both the foodie and the um uh and the instant pot now that takes care of the pressure cooker lids for both of them and the pressure cooking parts of this the foodie air frying lid is a whole nother ball game that i honestly don't have the perfect solution for i've heard people will take a screwdriver and actually unscrew the um, top of their foodie and that makes me a little nervous, particularly for warranty sake, but hey, that's it's yours to do with. These sponges will reach to a certain point in there. Generally what I do is I take a wet paper towel and wipe off any excess that I can get to anywhere. Um, and then I also have seen people use vent brushes that you get like for your dryer vent to get up in there. And I've done that a little bit. For the most part, I just try to keep it as clean as I can, but also realize that it's kind of like a fryer. So it, it's going to have places I can't entirely get to. I'd love it if you have advice for how you do your foodie, your foodie air fryer lid. I'd love for you to guys give me um, your pointers on that. I've seen a couple options. I just haven't seen anything that I would consider absolutely ideal for that. But what I wanted to focus on today primarily is the pressure cookers. So if you would like some information about um, the foodie air fryer and then uh, or the air crisp feature with the foodie and then also me to talk about traditional air fryers at the same time like I did instant pot with the pressure cooking feature we can do that too just comment down below and let me know but if you like this video we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up if you're not already a member of the crock posse we'd love for you to click subscribe down below and become a member of our slow cooking family if you'd like notified every time we upload a video click the ding -a ling that's the notification bell down below and youtube will let you know every time we upload a video but whatever you do we hope you laugh often eat good food and speak life bye guys i gotta use my hot spot but the good news is it's loading fast that's nice i'm glad that i could record that there Hey guys, today on Foodie Friday, we are talking through tips for beginners for electric pressure beginners. Would you get it right? I'm like, you better just stop it. <laughs> hey guys, today on Foodie Friday, we are talking through tips and t la, 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 la. this is shouldn't be this hard. Tips and tricks for beginners for doing intros to videos. Stop the video and start it again so that you've got more time so it doesn't cut in the middle of what you're saying. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon.